it's time. I'm talking about the cost of having four premature babies in America. I'm talking about quadruplets and this is not including the delivery. This is the cost of all of the care that the NICU team did. Take all of these and add it up, which is the cost for just the NICU. And then you take this, which was 13 pages long, and add it up, which is medications and everything else he needed done. Making my grand total to have premature quadruplets who need life-saving treatment in America's cost, $4,045,927.95. I have a lot of followers out of other countries, and when I posted that, people are in my comments like, we would never even think about that. How many is that? You guys, stop. That's four. Oh my God, I'm literally freaking out right now. I'm actually stop. freaking out. I'm not kidding you. I had a pretty clear-cut, fantastic pregnancy, which isn't always the case with high-order multiples, but at 28 weeks and one day pregnant, my water broke and we had to have the C-section. So my smallest son, which is actually my firstborn, Atlas, he was born at one pound and 14 ounces, so tiny. He was in nano preemie diapers that barely even fit. They were like the size of my pinky. Um, and then my next biggest was my daughter. She was two pounds and two ounces. Then um, Dominic was two pounds and five ounces and Morgan was two pounds and seven ounces. All Nikki parents talk about the sound of the monitors will go on for the rest of your life and you'll hear what that is like but I have found you know two and a half years later I'm healed from a lot of that it doesn't bother me as much um, but going through that I think kind of helps me going into what it's going to be like with four premature kids for the next two years I don't think you can ever truly financially prepare. Um, when I got pregnant, I was working full-time. My husband was working full-time. I did work for an amazing um, company, so that was not the issue. But the issue was looking at, this is still, there's sweet spots in the birth of a child, a premature child. Like if they're under a certain birth weight, you can qualify for more things. But if they're an ounce over or a couple grams over, you don't qualify for that. And nobody wants to have to live off government assistance. But in the United States of America, it's kind of hard to know, okay, you're going into this situation. My insurance is not gonna cover X, Y, Z, or it has to be this substantial for them to actually cover it. Um, so for me, I think at 16 weeks pregnant, I decided to quit my job to get some of those, to get some of that assistance because there was no other way. Um, I moved my mom in with us to kind of help financially for the first year. So we were able to get on Medicaid because I quit my job. We added it all up. I think it was over $4 million, which is absolutely insane. And that's not counting my delivery. All of that ended up being covered by Medicaid um, as soon as they were over 30 days. My goal now is to, and has been since I've had my kids, is to really support NICU parents and what they decide to do. I think a lot of shame comes from being on government assistance and even being a stay-at-home mom. There's a lot of things that people think you're lazy, people think you don't do much, but at the end of the day, I think as a parent, we're just out here trying to survive and do what we can to make it day-to-day. -day. 